بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار يقول مؤلف رحمه الله تعالى كتاب الزكاة وهي واجبة على كل مسلم حر مالك نصابا ملكا تاما ولا زكاة في مال حتى يحول عليه الحول The author رحمه الله تعالى in the book عمدة الفقه it began with كتاب الزكاة كتاب Zaka, the book of Zaka. And before going into the statements of the author, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, we have to do a number of things. And these number of things that we do, Bi'idnillahi Ta'ala, because this is a very complicated, very difficult chapter, the chapter of Zaka, we have to do these things first, and inshallah Ta'ala, we're going to the statement of the author. The first thing, as I'm sure from your previous classes of fiqh, for those who've been attending for a very long time, Brother Shahid, is that we always begin with in any chapter is what? Definition. So we we'll define it first and foremost before we give the rulings of that particular thing, whether it's wajib, whether it's makruh, whether it's haram. And the reason we do this is because hukma ala shay faru'un min tasawwurihi. That a ruling of something is only a branch of it. You cannot really understand the thing properly until you understand what it means for you to give a ruling. So whatever the definition is going to be, based on this definition, inshallah ta'ala, where we find different opinion amongst the scholars, this definition will guide us to the right opinion, inshallah ta'ala. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to define what is a zakah. We're going to define it linguistically and according to the sharia. Ah. The second thing which we're going to do, bi'idnillahi ta'ala, is to bring the proof of its mashru'iyya, the proof of the legislation of zakah. What is the proof of zakah? Thirdly, the ruling of zakah. Is it wajib? Is it obligatory to pay the zakah? And then we're going to the statements of the author, rahimahullah. May Allah have mercy upon him. So first and foremost, az zakah. Az zakah to lughatan. And the reason we always define things linguistically is because everything has a linguistic meaning and it has a what? A sharia meaning, a scientific meaning. And if you're not aware of the linguistic meaning, sometimes it may affect your sharia understanding of that thing. For example, as salah as salah we all know what salah is. We just perform salah But salah has a linguistic meaning and it has a what? A sharia meaning. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that was salli, pray alayhim, inna salataka kanat sakan lahum. That your salah for them is what? Sakan. Salah here, it doesn't mean the salah of Isha. It means a what? A dua, the prayer. To make dua or to invoke for somebody. You understand? So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. That Allah and his, prophet, and his angels, they do salah upon the Prophet. People that only understand the sharia meaning, like some of the orientalists who say, you Muslims, your Lord, Allah azza wa jalla, and the angels, they do salah to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But if you understand, other than the sharia meaning, there's a linguistic meaning. Jayid, which is a dua Other than the meaning of the sharia meaning, which we know the salah, which you perform with ruku'ah, part of the meaning of a salah when Allah Ta'ala does so, is to mention the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam amongst the angels. And the salah of the angels is what? To make dua for the person. Allah forgives them, Allah have mercy upon them. So first and foremost is zakah. What is the linguistic meaning? As zakah has a number of meaning in the Arabic language. The first of those meaning is as ziyadah for something to increase, for something to increase. 
So the Arabs say, for example, zakka azzaru'u. The vegetation as zakka, as increased, has increased. So first meaning is increase. The second meaning of zakka linguistically is al madhu wa thana, which is praise, which is flattery. So we find this meaning the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al Najm, where Allah ta'ala said, Fala tu zakku anfusakum. That do not praise yourself. Do not claim purity for yourself. Do not flatter yourself. He knows better that or those who fear him. So the second meaning of zakah linguistically is what? Praise and flattery. The third meaning of zakah linguistically is purity. Tathir. For something to become pure. And we find this in Surah 2, Ash-Shams. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Qad aflaha man zakaha. As for the one that has purified his soul, he's the successful one. So zakah linguistically has a number of meanings, and we mentioned three from them. As for zakah, its meaning, according to the sharia, or scientific terminology of zakah, is haqqun wajibun fi malin khasin li ta'ifa khasa fi zamanin makhsus. Zakah is a due, a due, which is an obligation. Fi malin khasin from a specific type of wealth. Litaifa maqsusa for a specific type or group of people. And those group of people are the eight where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Surah Tawbah. Inna masadaqat lil fuqara wal masakin. These eight categories. Fi zamanin maqsus at a fixed or specific time. So zakah scientifically is an obligation which is due from a specific type of wealth from, or given to a specific group or categories of people at a specific time. This is the definition of a zakah. Now the next thing we're going to move to inshallah ta'ala is the hukum, the ruling of a zakah. What is the ruling of a zakah? As zakah or the proof of his legislation, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, he says, Buni al-Islam ala khamsin. Islam is built upon five things. And one of those things is what? Ita is zakah. Shahada of la ilaha illallah Muhammad rasulullah wa iqam is salah wa ita is zakah. So zakah is the third pillar of Islam. It comes immediately after salah. And that's why you find many ayah in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always mentions salah and zakah. Wa aqimu salah wa atu az zakah. Jayyid? Also, concerning the issue of zakah, there's a severe warning in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those who do not pay the zakah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ يَكْنِزُونَ الذَّهَبَ وَالْفِضَّةَ وَلَا يُنْفِقُونَهَا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ فَبَشِّرُهُمْ بِعَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ and those who hoard gold and silver and do not spend it in the path of Allah, I mean, they don't pay the zakat that's due upon it. فَبَشِّرْهُمْ بِعَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ Warn them or give them tidings of a painful punishment. And what is that punishment? يَوْمَ يُحْمَى عَلَيْهَا فِي نَارِ جَهَنَّمَا فَتُكْوَى بِهَا جِبَاؤُهُمْ وَجُنُوبُهُمْ وَظُهُورُهُمْ That يوم قيامة that which they've hoarded, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put it into the hellfire. And it will take what they've hoarded out of the hellfire and it will brand them with it on their forehead, on their sides, and on their back. And it will be said to them, هَذَا مَا كَنَسْتُمْ لِأَنفُسِكُمْ This is what you've hoarded for yourself. فَذُوقُوا مَا كُنْتُمْ تَكْنِزُونَ Taste that which you've hoarded for yourself. So severe punishment for those who hoard or don't pay the zakah. Also in hadith Abu Hurayr radiallahu ta'ala an, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man atahu Allahu ta'ala malan falam yu'addi zakatahu muthila lahu malahu yawm al-qiyama shuja'an aqra' That the person who Allah ta'ala has given wealth and he doesn't pay the zakah. Yawm al-qiyama, his wealth will come in the form of of a bald-headed, poisonous snake. 
that has two black spots over his eyes. And Yom Qiyamah, that snake, would tie itself around his neck, and that snake would bite from his cheek. The snake that would be his wealth, it comes in the form of a snake, his wealth. And he said, I'm your wealth. I'm that which you've hoarded. ثم, and then after that, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam read the saying of Allah subhanahu wa taala: "ولا تحسبن الذين." Do not think that those Allah subhanahu wa taala is giving يبخلون that they stingy and they miserly with it. Do not count them to be successful. They're not successful. They be punished for this يوم القيامة on the day of judgment. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he read this ayah. As for the one who denies the obligation of salah of zakah. He said, it's not obligatory to pay zakah. What is the ruling of this person? Kufr is disbelief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one would hold zakah or refuses to pay the zakah because he denies or disputes the obligation of zakah. This is kufr, he's a kafir. What about the one who doesn't deny his obligation but he doesn't pay the zakah out of being miserly or being complacent? Because you find many people, they're complacent when it comes to ahkam with zakah, ruling of zakah. And some people don't really want to ask because when you ask, another door opens up for you. You know, that a door opens up for you that I don't even want to know. Ignorance is bliss, as they say. You know, so long as I know I'm not responsible, no. Some ignorance is bliss. If you do not know, Allah Ta'ala has ordered you to ask Ahla Dhikri in Kuntum La Ta'alamu, to ask those who know if you don't know. Ask those who know. So some people say ignorance is bliss. I don't even want to know. The one who doesn't pay it out of being miserly or out of being complacent, as many people are nowadays. For example, you see this class of zakah or other thing, you find very few people turn out, even if they have the wealth of zakah, they don't know what they need to pay zakah on. What is the ruling on this person? Is this also kufr disbelief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The scholars are divided on two opinions in this. They say the one that doesn't pay the zakah, even if he believes it's an obligation, but he doesn't pay the zakah, he withholds it out of being miserly or out of being complacent, a group of scholars, including Imam Ahmed rahimahullah ta'ala in a riwayah, say this person is a kafir, is disbelieved, is not a Muslim, even if he believes it's obligatory. And they say, or they use the evidence of the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَإِن تَابُوا وَأَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتَوا الزَّكَاةَ فَإِخْوَانُكُمْ فِي الدِّينَ That if they repent, and who's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking about here? The mushrikeen, the kuffar. If they repent, and they pray the salah and they pay the zakah they become your brother in religion and Islamic brotherhood is never negated no matter what the situation is except through what? disbelief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even if two group of Muslims fight each other Allah ta'ala says فَأَصْلِحُ بَيْنَهُمَا do sulh between them reconcile because they're still brothers but as for the one that doesn't pay the zakah, these scholars say he's a kafir because the brotherhood is completely negated. Another group of scholars, they say this person that doesn't pay the zakah is not a kafir, but he's committed a major, major sin. And their evidence of this is the saying of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in which he said that ma min sahibi dhahab wala fiddatin la yaddi minha haqqaha illa idha kana yawm qiyamah صُفِّحَتْ لَهُ صَفَاحِهَا مِنْ نَارِ That is not a person who doesn't pay, who has gold or silver, <clears throat> and doesn't pay his due right, except يَوْمَ Qiyama, that which is not paid upon it, or that thing which is not paid as zakah upon, will be made into place of fire. And these place of fire, you'll be branded with it on his forehead, on his side, and on his back. Kullama baradat, and every time it cools down, Allah Ta'ala will repeat the heat again. Uidat lahu. It will be repeated, the burn again and again. Fi yawmin kana miqdaruhu khamsina alfa sana. On a day which is like, is like one day on that day is to the extent of 50,000 years. So it will be branded, every, branded with it every time it cools down. And one day is that 50,000 years. 
حَتَّى يُقْضَ بَيْنَ العباد Until the servants are judged amongst. And after the judgment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of amongst the servants, فَسَيَارَ سَبِيلَهُ It will see his path. إِمَّا إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ وَإِمَّا إِلَى النَّارِ Either to the paradise, Jannah, or to the hellfire. Where is the proof in this hadith that the person who doesn't pay the zakah out of being miserly or complacent is not a kafir? Where's the proof? It has two choices. He's either going to go to Jannah or go to the hellfire. And the kafir does not go to where? Jannah. So this is the proof in this hadith. that if he, It's a major sin, definitely, and it's a fair punishment. But ya rasabilahu, you see his path. Either Jannah, either the hellfire. If he was kafir, there's no path to where? To Jannah. Jayid? What about what the other scholars say first and foremost from the ayah? The ayah, what we understand definitely is what is mafhum, understood is, there's no brotherhood if they don't possess zakah. We all understand that. Therefore, there's no Islam. But the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ is mantuq, is what is explicitly stated. So that which is understood, or that which is explicitly stated, has a presence or precedence over what is understood. You get me? That which is explicitly stated has a precedence over what is understood. Jayid? So, for example, when the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, they came to the Prophet ﷺ, concerning the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that those who believe and they do not mix imanahum bi min with oppression, the Sahaba were concerned. All of us oppress ourselves. Then the Prophet ﷺ, because that's what's understood, he explained to them that the dhulm here is the dhulm of what? Oppression is oppression of shirk. Because the Quran is explained by the sunnah. So this ayah generally means the brotherhood is broken. But the sunnah explicitly states that what? The one that doesn't pay the zakah, he either goes to the hellfire or goes to jannah. Jayid, the other thing that makes us know tariqus zakah, the one that withholds the zakah is not a kafir, is the statement of Abdullah ibn Shaqiq. Abdullah ibn Shaqiq was a tabi'i. He said, مَا كَانَ أَصْحَابُ مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يَرَوْنَ يعني The companions of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, they never, ever, ever considered anything يعني شيء من الأعمال تركه كفر That there's nothing you do or you abandon from actions and acts of worship that makes you a kafir إلا الصلاة Except for the salah. So whether it's zakah, whether it's hajj, all of these things, if you abandon it, you're not a kafir, except for what? A salah. So the most authentic opinion, Wallahu ta'ala a'lam, is mani'u zakah. The one that doesn't pay the zakah out of being complacent or being miserly is not a what? A kafir. Now to the book, for those of you who have the book. In this book, now we're going to go through, or this part of the book, the conditions of wujubu salah, uh, a zakah, that makes zakah obligatory. The author says, here wajibatun ala kulli muslimin. It is an obligation of every single Muslim. Hurrun, free. Malaka nisaban. He possesses the nisab, the minimum amount that zakah is due upon. There's a minimum amount. Mulkan taman. He possesses something which is mulkan taman, something which has stability, consistency. Jayid, complete possession of that thing. Jayid. And, وَلَا زَكَاتَ فِي مَالٍ حَتَّى يَحُولَ عَلَيْ الْحَوْلِ And a year, a complete year, or complete howl, has come around on that particular commodity or that particular wealth. Jayid. And the reason I'm avoiding saying a year, generally it's a year, but there are exceptions that we're going to see. There are the exceptions to the rule of you pay the zakah on everything every year. There are exceptions to this. So he's mentioned how many conditions here. He says it's an obligation upon every single Muslim. So the first condition is what? Islam. Hur was free, not a slave. The second condition is what? Not to be a slave, free. Third condition, he has to have the minimum amount for zakah to be obligatory. Uh, Fourth condition, it should not be subject to instability or guaranteed. It has to be something guaranteed that is in his possession all the, for that full year. And the last condition is tamam al hawl. That the hawl or the year has to pass completely. Jade, except with those exceptions, we're going to 
mention, but everything has a period. But for something, the majority of thing is a year, and for something is not a year, but there's a period, there's always a period. That period has to pass. As for the first condition, which is what? Al, al Islam. It therefore means a zakah is not obligatory al al kafir, it's not obligatory upon the kafir, the non Muslim, to pay the zakah. And what is the proof that it's not obligatory upon the non Muslim to pay the zakah? The saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَمَا مَنَعَهُمْ Nothing prevented أَن تُقْبَلَ صَدَقَاتُهُمْ Nothing prevented their sadaqah, their zakah, being accepted إِلَّا أَنَّهُمْ كَفَرُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ Except they disbelieved in Allah and His Messenger. So whatever sadaqat, charity they give, is not accepted. So zakah is not obligatory upon them. Now although zakah is not obligatory upon the non-Muslims, are they going to be called to account for zakah yawm al-qiyamah? Would they be called to account? Yes. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he asks the people in the hellfire, مَا سَلَكَكُمْ فِي سَقَرْ What caused you to be thrown into the hellfire? قَالُوا لَمْ نَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُصَلِّينَ We're not of those who prayed. These are kufar. We're not of those who performed the salah. So those salah, is it obligatory upon the kafir? لا. But they'll be called, and they'll be called to reckon them for Yom Qiyamah, and it'll increase them in their torment and their punishment, they didn't do it. وَلَمْ نَكُنْ نُطْعِمُ الْمِسْكِينَ And we didn't use to feed the miskin. The ulama say, hey, this is zakah. This is a zakah. And what is the proof these are kuffar? The end of the ayah. وَكُنَّ نُكَذِّبُ بِيَوْمِ الدِّينَ We used to deny the day of judgment. These are kuffar. So although it's not obligatory upon them, they will be called and be punished for it yawm al qiyamah. So therefore, zakah is obligatory upon Muslim and upon a what? A kafir. The second condition is what? A free person. So therefore, zakah is not obligatory upon a slave. Why? Because the slave and everything he owns belongs to who? His master. So it's not obligatory upon him. The third condition is what? He has to possess the minimum amount. The minimum amount, try to memorize this in Arabic, is called nisab. He has to possess the nisab. And what is a nisab? What is the minimum amount? The minimum amount, according to the type of thing we're talking about, differs. Yes? But he has to possess that minimum amount. And the minimum amount is decided by who? By Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. According to the type of commodity we're speaking about, he has to possess the minimum amount. So if somebody, for example, is poor, impoverished, or poor, is zakah obligatory upon him? No. What if a person is not poor, like me or you, for example, but we've not fulfilled the minimum amount? We have. We have 75% of it, of the nisab. Do we have to pay zakah? No. He has to fulfill the minimum amounts, even if you're not poor. It has to fulfill the minimum amount. So this is the third condition. The fourth condition is what? Mulk and term. That it has to be stable. Meaning, is a source of income or is a type of wealth that is not subject to instability. What do we mean by this? Rent, for example. Every year, if you bought a property to rent out, and rent is a form of what? Income. The zakah is due upon the what? The rent, yearly. Jayid, but rent money is it an exa- is an example of that which is not stable. Meaning, if I pay you the rent for the year, okay, for the whole year, do you pay the zakah as you receive the rent from me for the whole year? No. When do you pay the zakah? At the end of the year, because it's not stable. Why is it not stable? If the house burns down or gets destroyed before the end of the year, you have to give the money back to the woo, to the tenant. So it has to be wealth which is stably in your possession. That, that year is completely stable with your possession. So it has to be stable, something the whole year is completed upon. So example is rent. And the last condition is what? The period must be completed. And this is where I need you gentlemen to put your thinking caps on. This is the most difficult part of the class today, inshallah. I'm going to end upon this. Which is that the period must be completed, the complete period of the zakah. Now, we need a specified or fixed period. Why do we need a fixed period? We need a fixed period because you can't expect people to pay zakah every day, every month, every week, 
every hour. So there must be a what? A fixed period to pay the zakah. And the fixed period, as we said previously, is what? Generally, every year. So for example, inshallah, if you inherit 100,000 riyals today, we're in uh, February 2019, the zakah will be due on that 200,000 when? Thank you. Next year, 2020. Next February, well, February 2020 will be due, okay? On that 200,000. If we inherit 200,000 this month, February 2019, and you inherit another inheritance in October of 50,000, October 2019, when is the zakah due on the first inheritance? And on the second inheritance? Thank you. Barakallahu feekum. Different times. Because you got these two things at different periods. So you don't say yearly, I'm going to pay my zakah, I'm going to pay 220 or 250. No. This is one thing, this is another thing. So the zakah on each thing generally is due when? Yearly. On each thing is due yearly. On each thing. Now, as we said, there's exceptions to that rule. And the exceptions to that rule are the following things. For the following things, there's a principle. And that principle is hawluhu hawl aslihi. That is due time, hawluhu is due time, always coincides with the due time of the initial amount or the initial investment. The due time for certain things, which I'm going to mention, always coincides with the same due time of the initial investment. And these things are profit from trade, commodities for sale, and livestock. So we start with profit to make it clearer. Profit, for example, you have profit this year, or you started a business this year, February 2019 with 100,000 riyals. Sometime during the year, you, let's say March, for example, you made a profit of 50,000. Okay? Come January, you still have that 50 plus the 100. Come February, I'm sorry, 2020, how much do you have? 150,000 riyals. Remember the 100,000 was from when? February. And the 50,000 is when? March. By February, one year will be completed on the 100,000. By March, or by February, is the other year completed upon the 50,000? No. So what do you pay the zakat on? Do you pay on the 100,000 or do you pay on 150,000? 150,000. Because for profits, the due time is the same due time as the initial investment. So you understand now? Unlike inheritance, whereby if you have 50,000, February 2019, and you get another 50,000, October 2019, you pay the zakah on each 50,000 yearly. Do you understand? With the profit, if you have a profit today, in February of, or you, have a, you start a business, I'm sorry, with 200,000 riyals, and then come next year, you have 250,000 riyal. That 50,000, the extra, came after February. You understand? It came after when? February. It doesn't matter when it came in February, but the zakah is due on it, along with the initial investment, when the zakah is due on the what? The initial investment. Understood? Another example. You start a business, to make it clearer, in January 2019. Up to December 2019, the money you started the business with still remains 100,000. Just 100,000. On the 31st of December, you make a profit of 50,000. Okay? 50,000. So now how much do you have in January? 150,000. What do you pay the zakat on? On the 100,000 in January, because it's from January to January, 
Or do you pay under 150,000, even though the 50,000 was only in December? 150,000. Because why? It's profit. Okay? What about inheritance? You inherited something in January, 50,000. And then come December, you inherit another 50,000. Okay? When it comes to the January of the next year, do you pay the zakat on the 50,000 from January or do you pay on both, the one in January or in December? 50,000. Only the 50,000 because this is what? Inheritance. But when it comes to profit from a business, it's different. Likewise, investment. For example, I buy a house for a million riyal. Okay? I buy in March. The next year of that March, the zakat is due on how much? A million. However, if the value of that house increases, if it increases, by next year March, the house now is worth 2.5 million. And the increase was overnight, just like it happens sometimes with properties. All of a sudden, my area became a hotspot. So in January, all the way, when I buy the house, in January, right? In December, the property market just went vroom. My house now is worth 2.5 million. But the increase is only before how long? One month. Do I have to wait for one year to pay that as account the increase? Do I have to wait for another year? I pay immediately because it's what? Connected to the initial investment. Does everybody understand that? So the exceptions is profits and trade commodities. Okay? So some people have business people, they have a car showroom. Many business people like Sheikh Suleiman, mashallah, they do many different things. Sheikh Suleiman today could be selling a car. Tomorrow could be selling a tractor. The next day could be selling clothes. The day after that, selling mobile phones. So now Sheikh Suleiman is selling cars. He's selling clothing. He's selling mobile phones. He invested in all these three businesses, 100,000. Okay? In three different commodities. Come next year, he started in January. Come next year, January. Yes? Within the year, he bought this, let's say, in January. The cars. The clothes he bought in March. And the mobile phone, December. Okay? Three different periods. Come next year, January, does he pay the zakah only on this property, which was from January to January? Or does he pay the zakah for that which he got in March and that which he got in December? Does he pay all of it together? Yes, all of it together. All of it together. Why? Because commodities and, and profits, it goes back to the initial investment. Otherwise, most business people will not pay any zakah because business people are constantly changing their commodities. So the zakah is paid yearly, yes, but the due upon the commodity is due when that year is what? Due, not the year for the commodity. So separate between the commodity and the due time. Understood? Yeah? So for example, another example. I have 10 different commodities I sell. For example, this year, I sold this mobile phone. And I finished with it in February. I bought it in uh, January. I finished with it in February. So it sold. Khalas, I don't have it anymore. It's gone. And then by March, I go into another business, clothing. I sold it. It's gone. It's finished now. Okay? And then by April, I buy cars. I sold it, it's gone. And I started with how much? 100,000. Okay? What? Yes. Exactly. The same money. Yes. Yes, on that 100,000. So if you have 100,000, it's that same 100,000. So with that 100,000, you bought three different things. The zakah will be due on all of those things based on when you invested the initial amount. You cannot say, I've only had this for one day, and the, the zakah for the initial amount is due. You say, I've only had one day, I have to wait for another year to pay the zakah. No. Once the initial amount is due, the zakah is due on that thing. Because what most people do, they say, okay, they buy a property, for example, they've invested in property, and he's only had property for like six months. 
but the money invested in it, the zakat is due on it. So he said, you know, I paid the money for the investment. As for the property, I'm going to wait another six months. No. Once the investment, the time of the investment is due, the time for the zakat, the commodity, is also due. You understand? So if I buy a property today for 100000 next year, February, I'm going to pay zakat on 100000 okay? Exactly. So it has to go, but, no, you have to have the initial investment for the year. But the commodity don't have to be for a year. Because I might buy the increase or the profit doesn't have to be for a year. I might buy the property now in February, right? But the increase only happened when? In December. Do I wait for a year to pay the zakat on the increase or do I pay all together from the initial investment? From the initial investment. What people wait for, they wait for the zakat on the increase. They say, you know what, 50,000, we only had it for one day. I'm going to wait a year to pay the zakat on the 50. You understand? Even if the initial investment was a year old. You understand? So you always pay, when it comes to profits, you pay along with the initial investment. Yes. Yeah, that's why it has to be mulk and term, and it's completely in your possession. That's why the condition mulk and term, and it's yours. You possess it. Until then, you is nothing. You have to more contaminate, completely in your possession. So one example, there's three things we said, right? One is profits. Other is what? Commodities. So you have, for example, let's say, uh, Ansar Gallery. He has many different things in there. He, he sells carpets in Ansar Gallery. They sell electronics. They sell different things. The initial, when it comes to the zakat, does he say, I only bought the carpet last year. I'm going to pay the zakat for the carpet in a year's time. No. The initial investment... When it's due upon all of those things in Ansar Gary, the zakat is due. Understood? From the initial what? Investment. The third example is livestock. With livestock, let's say sheep, for example. For 40 sheep, the zakat is one sheep. If you have 40 sheep in January 2019, yes? And these 40 sheep, each one gave birth to four sheep. How many sheep do we have? 200, Barakallah, you have 200. We have 200 sheep. These 200 sheep, they're only, let's say, six months old. So we have an increase of 160, right? Do you pay the zakah for the 40 only in January 2020, or do you pay for all of the 200? All 200. So any increase, even if the sheep was only one day old, then it doesn't matter. If they're dead, when the time is due, so when the Prophet used to send people to collect the zakah for sheep or for cattle, they count the heads of the cattle. They don't count their ages. So if they're not present, they're not present. The zakah, khalas, not there. They count on the, what is present at that time when the initial one was born. So if you had 40 and by, let's say, a year's time, you got 120, we don't say, well, this 40 is only a year. The extra 80 would do it next year. No. You do it all at the same time. So understood, right? So the exceptions to the rule are three things. Profits, trade commodities, and livestock. Their due time is the due time of the initial amount. And the initial amount is due when, like you said? Every, every year. So the initial amount is due every year. Okay? Now there's two more. Yes. Barakallah Islamic calendar. And that's why most people, they tend to, to keep a hold of it, they tend to do it in Ramadan. Most people think you have to pay your zakat only in Ramadan. But to remember, many people remember Ramadan, they yell, because not many people keep up with the Islamic calendar. So most people tend to pay the zakat after Ramadan, but Islamic calendar. Anyway, yes. Mm. Mm. Thank you very much. Yes, like that. Put on 50. Now, we'll finish, then we'll go back to the questions. Yeah? So three things, profits, commodities, and what else? Livestock. And for these three things, they're connected to the initial investment. And the initial investment is how long? One year. The next two things are not connected to a year. They're things that the zakah will be due on whenever they're ready, whenever they are ready. One is grains and fruits, yes? So for grains, for example, whenever it becomes hard and the fruit, whenever it ripens, the, the zakah is due upon it immediately. 
Whether it takes a month, whether it takes two months, is due immediately. Based on the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Surah An'am, وَآتُوا حَقَّهُ يَوْمْ حِصَادِ And pay uh, hasadi. And pay is due rise on the day of his hasad, the day of his harvest. وَآتُوا حَقَّهُ يَوْمْ حَصَادِهِ Pay is due rise when it harvests. So as soon as it harvests, the zakat is due. You understand? As soon as it's harvested, the zakat is due. Yes? Also, the second thing is mining. For, for example, someone's mining, they get gold. Yes? The zakat is due immediately when it comes to minerals or materials like gold, silver, that are for mining. Yes? The zakat is due when? Immediately. So these five things, when we say tamamul haw, completion of the period, generally the period is what? One year. However, when it comes to profits, the period is based on the initial investment. When it comes to livestock, the period is based on the, init when the, when, uh, the initial amount you had in the first place of the livestock. When that is due, the increase is due. Yes? When it comes to commodities you bought, the amount you started with, when the time for that is due, the value, the value at that time or the profit, the increase is due at the same time. So for example, I bought a house for 100,000. In a year's time, it's still 100,000. How much zakat do I pay? On how much? On 100,000. Yes? So questions to you now, before the questions. Maybe the questions will help us to make it easier. Okay, a question to our brother here in the front. Yes? A person bought a house for 200,000 in March. 2019 come next year 2020 the house has now increased in value by 50,000 is the zakah due only on the 200,000 that's been for that year that's done a year or is it due also on the 50,000 plus so it'd be how much zakah and how much 250,000 Abdurrahman a person inherits in January 2019 500,000 riyals. That's a lot of money. And October 2019, he gets another 500,000. And by January 2020, he has a million riyal. He has how much? A million riyal. Does he pay the zakah on a million riyal or does he pay on the 500,000 riyal? Only the 500,000 because it's due yearly. As for the other 500,000, it pays it October 2020. Understood? Okay. Now, if you look at all these conditions, we'll find so far, usually, whether you're doing Kitab al-Salah or Kitab al-Siyam, there's two conditions that was mentioned we've not mentioned here, which is al-aql wal which is sanity and maturity. The reason this is not mentioned here, some scholars are opinion that uh, the one who doesn't possess sound mind or doesn't possess, uh, has not reached the age of maturity, pays no, he, does, he, he doesn't pay zakah. Why? Because it's ibadah. Every act of worship needs what? Intention. The mad person doesn't have an intention. And the child, it doesn't have to be used to have an intention. So therefore, zakah is not obligatory upon who? Upon children. Whereas the other scholars, including the author of this book, he didn't put it as a condition. He put it not as a condition. Why? What is the authentic opinion or the most sahih opinion? That children pay zakah, crazy people pay zakah, or insane people pay zakah, or they don't pay zakah. The right opinion is they pay the zakah. Because when we go back to the definition of zakah, we say it is a due obligation. From an individual? No. Female in from a specific type of wealth. So it's not connected to the individual. That's what Allah Ta'ala says to the Prophet in the Quran. Khud min amwalihim. Take from their wealth. Sadaqah. So it's connected to the what? Not the individual, but to the wealth. Because the zakah is the right of others. So therefore, we didn't mention the one that is not matured. So we take from the wealth of the orphans for zakah. So if an orphan's got a million, the zakah, even though it's an orphan, an orphan, the reason we use an orphan as an example is an orphan's not reached the age of maturity. Because many people, they're 20 years old, they're still at your team. 50 years old, my dad has died, I'm still at your team. La. Once you reach the age of maturity, which is either determined by age or so you're no longer a what? An orphan. 
So an orphan, therefore, zakah is due on their wealth. If they have the minimum, nisab. Likewise, the insane person, if he has the minimum nisab, the zakah is due upon it. And that's why Umar radiallahu an is a tajiru fi amwali yatama. Invest the money of the orphans. Why? If you do not invest it, what's going to happen to that wealth? It's going to get half eaten up by the zakah. You should invest the wealth of the orphans. Because every year you're paying zakah on it, zakah on it, zakah on it. But if you invest it, for example, in a property, the property is worth one million. Question for Sheikh Suleiman. I bought a property for the orphan, one million. But with the business intention of rental income, okay? Do I pay the zakah on the one million or do I pay it on the rental after every year? On the rent. Only on the rent, and that's after every year. So his money, which was one million, is stable. It stays there. But I'm paying zakah on the rent. And the, mon the rest of the money from the rent is also increasing his wealth. So when it comes to the wealth of the orphans or the insane, it's better to what? Invest it. Otherwise, it gets eaten up by the, the zakah. And some people might say, how could you pay money on the wealth of the orphans and this decreases their wealth? Even if you're not rich enough, you're looking after orphan, you could take from that wealth to spend on him, to look after him. You understand? This causes also what? A decrease. But in reality, you have to look at things in a spiritual manner that it increases with the barak of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's a haq. Naam. So we pause here for questions, inshallah. And this is what the brother asked as well earlier on. That, for example, you might have 100,000, you bought five different things. And then you have another money, right? You open some other kind of business with it for selling commodities. Is it due on all of it or that 100,000 for those things or the 100,000 for those? Separate, totally separate. So if I invent 100,000 in three different things, those three different things at the end of the year of the initial investment, I pay the zakat on them if there's any increase. The other 100,000 I invested in five other different things, at the end of that initial investment, I pay the zakat on those things like that. No zakat. If there's a loss, for example, even if it's, let's say, for example, you're left with 70,000, the zakah is due on the 70,000. But if you sh go down, be to, 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 look at the fairness of the sharia. If it goes below, if it goes below, you, only, you don't pay nothing. If it goes below, then it's up. And also, there's some things you cannot really determine. For example, you're not really sure the value. If you're not sure the value, is it increased? Is it the same? What do you pay? you go by that which you're sure of, that which you pay for it initially. So if you paid 100,000 for something, you're not sure, is it worth 120, 110? You're not really sure. You go back to that which you're sure of, which was what? You bought it for 100,000. But if it's definitely made a loss, like you said, you pay the zakah on what you have. And if it's too much of a loss, you don't pay the zakah. Now, very good question. Whenever you sell it, you calculate it, whenever you do get that money, you pay it back. Exactly. So for example, my house now, I have to pay zakah for 2.5 million. But I don't have the cash flow. But I know for that year, 2020, this was my, this is the amount is due. When I eventually sell it, I need to pay that zakah. Allahu alam. Until the sale is taking place. I mean, if it's not due to your own thing, obviously there's no sin upon you. This is not what we call mania. You're not purposely withholding the zakah. You know, but if you have the cash, for example, it's worth 2.5, but I have, like the brother said, I have the cash flow. I pay it. But if I don't have the cash flow, that's something else. No. There's no zakah. The housing I'm talking about, I buy a house, exactly. So it could be due on two types of property. For example, I buy one house for renting out. But it's my house. I don't pay the zakah upon the house itself or the value of the house. I pay the zakah upon the rent. But there's some people, they don't rent. They just buy purely for buying and selling. If it's purely for buying and selling, like some brothers I know, a brother bought two houses, right? So he said after a few years, when he sells the first house, it will be enough to finish building the other house. So now, because they're both his houses, he said, I'm not paying the zakat on both. Does he have to pay zakat on one? Yes, because one of them was to, for, to make money to build the other. If you have the intention to live on it, like, but it's the intention to buy and sell, those who deal in real estates, to buy and sell. You know, every single real estate you buy, also you pay it on the house. Some of it is on the rent, because it might be just for the purpose of rent and not for the purpose of sell. 
So if cars, for example, you don't pay zakah on your car, but if I've bought a car, like some tradespeople, they drive their car around, but they know, in, you know, like wheeler dealers, they know, you know what, in one month I'm selling this car. He has to pay the zakah on it, because he bought it to sell. You understand? So even if I buy a pigeon tomorrow, and the amount of pigeons reaches the nisab, yes, I have to pay the zakah on it. You understand? Because it's for the intention of what? To sell. Yes, even clothing, whatever, so long as the intention is to what? For trade. You have to pay the zakat. Now, Jazakumullah khairan. Sorry? From your income. This is another thing. One of the things that zakat is due upon yearly is gold and silver. Now, the equivalent of that in the time we live in, because people used to trade with gold and silver, is what we call today uh, currencies. Yes? So there's a certain minimum amount of a currency, which is usually about a thousand. Yes? It will be due on that. So if you've had, for example, this year, 1,000 pounds, yes? The zakah next year is due on that, how much? The minimum amount, which is 1,000. If by the end of that next year, your savings increase from 1,000 to 1,200, the zakah has to, that, sorry, that minimum amount has to be there for a complete year. Yeah? So for example, if I had 1,000, in January, the zakat is due upon the thousand when? January next year. But if I have a thousand in January and by March I have 1,500, next January, what do I pay the zakat? On the 1,000 or the 1,500? 1,000, because it's my saving. It's not business, savings. You understand? So it's what's completed the year. The only time you don't go by what's completed the year is the five things which you mentioned profit from trade. Profit from commodities, what else? Grains, livestock, and minerals, mining. 